We will now move on to our editing operations. We will add a valve actuator, insert a point along an existing pipe, copy and paste piping, and rotate piping. AutoPipe provides the ability to input information regarding valve actuators directly in the valve dialog box. This allows for more realistic modeling of eccentric loads on the valve due to the weight and location of the actuator. When the actuator auto option is checked on, the actuator weight and offsets will be grayed out and set to zero. The valve symbol will be shown as a hand wheel at a fixed distance from the valve body. Only the valve weight can be entered and it will be applied at the center line of the valve. When the actuator auto option is unchecked, the symbol, actuator weight, and actuator offsets are open for input. Default for the symbol option is unchecked, so a hand wheel symbol will be drawn at the actuator offset D location. When this option is checked, then the actuator symbol will change to a square box with the actuator point being B15D in the middle of the box. Enter the weight of the actuator in the actuator weight input. This weight is the dry weight of the actuator or hand wheel as a point load applied at the actuator offsets point D from the valve midpoint. Enter the offsets of the actuator from the valve center or midpoint along the global X, Y, and Z directions. If 000 are entered, then no hand wheel or actuator symbol will be plotted. A user can insert a point along an existing pipe run using the same command as inserting a new pipe run. The direction of the segment matters and it must be taken into account when inserting any new component. AutoPipe will recognize when the user is inserting a pipe run at an active point that already has piping after that point. By default, instead of inserting additional piping, a point will be inserted halfway along the existing pipe. The distance at which the additional point is inserted from the active point can be adjusted in the run point dialog box as usual. If the user wishes to insert additional piping along an existing run, the apply offset to all following points option must be checked on and then the length of the desired additional piping should be entered in the length field. The edit copy command enables the user to copy a selection set of points to a clipboard file without deleting the same set of points from the current model. Both piping points and beam members can be specified by the selection of points. However, the copy command won't work with a single point or when either end point of the selected range is part of a bend. In this case, the program will display a warning and it will cancel the copy command. The copy command makes a duplicate of the selected range and then it places a copy in memory. The range is copied to a .clp file in the current directory. After using either the cut or copy command to place a portion of the model on the clipboard, the paste command can be used to place those objects in any open model at a specified point. The points are renamed using the default naming conventions of the segment into which they're placed. There are some rules that apply when pasting the contents of the clipboard. If no range has been selected and the connect to selected points is enabled, the clipboard contents will be pasted and connected to the current point. If no range has been selected and an offset is specified, the clipboard contents will be pasted at the specified offset from the origin. If a range of points has been selected and the connect to selected points is specified, the clipboard contents will be repeatedly pasted and connected at each of the points in the selected range. If a range has been selected and an offset is specified, the clipboard contents will be repeatedly pasted at the specified offset from each point in the selected range. So it's important to make sure that you're aware of your active point or selected range. You can select the option Use Actual Coordinates to paste using real-world coordinates, for example, a structural model that's going into a piping model. The range of points will be inserted into the model as a new segment. If the selected range belong to more than one segment, new segments will be created for each. When pasting a segment into a model as a branch, a welding T is created by default. And segment rules apply when you're using the paste command and clipboard files may not be copied at either bends or component start points. 
Autopipe supports the ability to rotate certain features in a model relative to the global axis. A selected range of components can be rotated about a specific angle using the edit rotate command. When this command is selected, Autopipe prompts for the base point on the selection set. The default is the first point of the selection set. If the selected base point upon opening this component rotation dialog box isn't the desired point, you can manually enter a different point in the base point field. Alternatively, the model selection can be rotated about an arbitrary point in space offset from the origin. Next, the user needs to specify a rotation angle in the X, Y, and Z fields as desired. Note that there's no restriction to rotating the selection set along a single axis. The user can select the highlighted features that are needed for rotation. Entire sections can be selected and deselected through the Select Options drop-down menu. The user can also determine whether or not the rotation report should display after the rotation is complete using the Show Rotation Report checkbox. Regardless of whether this box is checked on or not, the report will still be saved in the model folder as a .rot file. Continuing with our piping model, let's work through our edit operations. First, we will add an actuator to a valve. So we're going to zoom in to the valve that runs from B15 to B20, and we will click on the valve to select it. We can double click on the valve in order to bring up the valve dialog box to modify the properties and then enter in our valve actuator changes. So I'll double click on the valve. We see the valve dialog box pops up. In the valve dialog box, we have an actuator section that we will work with here. First, we will uncheck where it says actuator auto. We will check on the symbol option. We will add our actuator weight as 300 pounds and an actuator offset in the DX direction 3 feet. With this, we can click OK to accept the dialog box. And if we zoom out a bit, we can now see our actuator applied to our valve. So this auto pipe capability allows for more realistic modeling of eccentric loads on the valve and the piping system due to the weight and the location of the actuator. Next, we will work with our copy, paste, and rotate edit operations. So let's go to View and Default View. And let's come to our Select ribbon and clear our selection. Here we're going to walk through steps to copy segment B and segment C. And then we will paste the copied segments at a point between point A0 and A5. So in order to do this, we first must insert an additional point between points A0 and A5. So we'll select A0 as our active point, and we will insert a pipe run. Autopipe will recognize when we are inserting a pipe run at an active point that already has piping after that point. So by default, instead of inserting additional piping, it will insert a point halfway along the existing piping. So here we see that the length between A0 and A5 was 10 feet. So the additional point is being inserted 5 feet away from point A00 at that halfway point by default. If a different length is required, the user can adjust this input as usual. We will accept this default length of 5 feet and click OK. We now see our point A30 in our piping model. As points are inserted into our autopipe piping model along existing piping, autopipe will continue to count up. You can see this in this example. The last point along segment A was previously A25 at the anchor. Now that we added this additional point, it is now the last point that was added, so it's automatically given the next point name of A30, since in this model the default point offset is 5. We can renumber the entire model or this individual segment at any time. Next, we will copy segments B and C and paste them at this newly added point A30. There are some different ways that we can perform this operation. In this case, we will use our input grid. So I can come to my view ribbon and click on my input grid to open that grid up. 
and I want to click on my segment tab. A nice easy way to select entire segments is simply by selecting the row in the segment tab of the input grid. So I can select segment B and pull down and select segment C also. In order to copy these, I need to come to my home ribbon and down to my copy button. In the command line, Autopipe asks for a base point to be selected. Again, this point can be selected by clicking on the point with the mouse in the graphical model or by simply typing in the point name. We want the base point of this copy selection to be point A5. So I'm going to type in A05. And I can then click OK. All of the piping will then become in-selected, turning back to its original gray color. This means that the selected piping has been copied and is queued to be used at a later time. We now want to paste that copied selection at point A30. So let's select A30 as our active point. We can come up to our home ribbon and our paste button. We see the paste dialog box pops up with a couple of different options that we discussed in our PowerPoint. We will use the default selection of connecting right to this selected base point at point A30. And we can click on OK. We now see that our two segments have been copied and pasted. And we now have five segments, segment A, B, C, D, and E. If we use our zoom and rotate tools, we can see that our segment C and our segment E are now clashing. So we're going to use our rotate edit operation in order to rotate segment E in the opposite direction so that it no longer clashes with segment C. Using our input grid, we can select segment E on our home ribbon in our operations grouping. We have a rotate option. We will click on that to open the component rotation dialog box. And in here, we will be rotating the selection set, which is segment E. We want to rotate about a base point, which is set to point E00 by default. And we really want to rotate about that Y axis. So that is an acceptable base point. We want to rotate about the Y axis 180 degrees. And we only have points in our selection set, which is selected here. And we're going to look at the rotation report once the rotation is complete. So we can click OK. Our rotation report pops up, and we simply see that 11 points were rotated 180 degrees about the Y axis at our base point E00. We can close out of our rotation report. And we now see that our segments C and E are no longer clashing. Here I'm going to reset my model by viewing the fault view and clearing my selection. The next thing I want to do is rotate my valve actuator on segment D. In this case, I won't be selecting an entire segment, so I'll close out of my input grid for now. And I'm going to zoom in around that valve. I can click on the valve once to select it, and again come to my home ribbon and rotate button. My base point by default is set to point D15, the first point of that valve, which is a correct input here. And we want to rotate about the Z axis, 180 degrees. So I'll come to my Z angle input and plug in 180. This time we see we're rotating points and a valve actuator. And again, I want to show my rotation report, and I'll click OK. My rotation report pops up, and it shows me that I've rotated three points and one valve actuator, 180 degrees, about the z-axis with my base point set to D15. I can close out of my report, and I see that my valve actuator was rotated. The offset is now in the opposite direction, going three feet in the negative x direction now. Again, I will clear my selection and view default. 
We are now ready to walk through inserting our pump. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.